Hi guys, welcome to Incomplete Dominance and Codominance. We're going to talk about when dominance is not complete. Right? Just like we started off in class on Wednesday. Incomplete dominance, remember? The offspring look like neither parent, and in codominance they look like both. What do I mean by that? If we were looking at crosses, and we were looking at complete dominance, notice here, complete dominance, and we did a cross between red and white, and the F1 turned out to be red, what does that tell us? Yes, red is dominant. What if we did a cross between red and white and the F1 turned out to be white? Exactly, that would tell us white's dominant. In incomplete dominance, the F1 is neither red nor white. Something in between a lot of times when it comes to incomplete dominance. And so this is supposed to be lighter red, right, light, light, these are, right, neither red nor white. That tells us incomplete dominance is acting here, not complete dominance. If it were complete dominance, it would have to end up being red or white, not something in between. Just like we talked about in class, phenotype and genotypic ratio, right, both are the same, one to two to one. Not the same for complete dominance. In complete dominance, the phenotypic ratio is 3 to 1, right, for complete. Does the genotypic ratio change? No, because the genotypic ratio doesn't change for any of these. The Punnett square is still the Punnett square, right? AA times AA is going to always give you the same genotypes. It's just what they look like or the manifestation of the genotype in the phenotype that changes. And just as an aside, we can also denote them using R, R prime, anything that's not big A, little a, to help us understand that there is no real complete dominance. One does not completely mask the other. All right. If we look at another example, in this case would be where we don't know if it's complete dominance, incomplete dominance, co-dominance, and we're just told that a parental, right, purple times white, ends up in the F1 being violet. What does that tell us immediately? Is violet the same as purple? No. Is white the same as purple? I mean, is violet the same as white? No. Looks like neither. If it looks like neither, must be incomplete dominance, right? There's no blending baloney. Remember that from chapter three when all these people before Mendel thought there was blending because purple and white made violet. It's in between. It blended together. Blah. Oh, shut up, you idiots. F2 shows us there's no blending. It's particulate, right? The purple comes back. The white comes back, right? And guess what the F2? One to two to one. Genotype, phenotype has to be either incomplete or co. In this case, it looks like neither. We'd call it incomplete. Here's a little example of co-dominance. In this case, we're using a P generation, right, which is homozygous for spotted, homozygous for dotted, and in this case, we're using the C with a superscript S for spotted and C with a superscript D for dotted, okay? Again, since we're talking about one gene, lentil coat pattern is the gene, and different alleles, we want to use the same letter for the main letter. The superscript can tell us the different alleles. If we tried to just use S and D as our notation for whether it's spotted or dotted, Remember, what about this? This suggests dihybrid, right? Whenever we do a dihybrid, like big T, little t, big R, little r, right? Two different letters means two different genes. This would suggest two different genes. When we're talking about alleles, it's not two different genes. It's the same gene, lentil coat pattern gene, two different alleles, spotted, dotted. Again, what do we get in the F1? The F1 shows signs of both. It's a heterozygous. And if you look really carefully, which I guess we could zoom in, ooh, there's spots and dots, right? Both show up. Looks like both. Whoa. 
That way we have to, whoa, we have to call it co-dominant, right? Again, it's, it's going to be semantics whether you call it co-dominant or incomplete. When it's something this clear cut, I'd expect you to know it's co because both show up versus incomplete. But if you go ahead and look at genotype and phenotype, it's still going to be one to two to one, right? So those two are the same. And again, back to the F2, right? We get our spotted only and our dotted only, and then our heterozygous too. So again, genotypes don't change, just what we call them, what they look like, their phenotype changes. And here's a little question, and I'm going to have you do this homework assignment and upload it. It will be due by midnight, oops, can't even read that, Sunday, what is the date Sunday? The 14th. Okay, and so it should be uploaded to iPad, assignment number 6.2, that's labeled homework, and I think it has the word cattle in it or something crazy, in the 9, 10, 14 Moodle lecture. Okay, so please do this Punnett Square, show your work, please, 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 and then pick your answer, screenshot, upload, get your points. So I know you don't want to do homework and I'm making you do something else. I, I know, I know. But this little lecture capture is now over.